Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a whole pile of DECA budget opera reissues. And we're going to start with, let's see, I'm going to cover all of them. I've got about seven of them here. And why not? Let's just go through them and chat about them, shall we? Uh, Peter Grimes. Love Peter Grimes. A lot of them are the Britain operas, by the way. It, wonderful performances for the most part. This is the Colin Davis Covent Garden Peter Grimes with John Vickers. Ooh, John Vickers as the crazy loony Peter Grimes. It was one of his signature roles. And he sounds as gruff and salty and demented as you will ever want to hear in Peter Grimes. Now, Ellen Orford is Heather Harper. Heather Harper was really past her prime when she made this. And she sings with great intelligence and sympathy. I, I give her full credit for that. But the voice is a little bit shopworn. Can't get around it. She's a little screechy, but, you know, I, I think you get past it. And she has a very, very good relationship with John Vickers, although you wonder why she would even care about Peter Grimes, because he's such a rough and gruff character in this particular version. And who else have we got? Balstrode is Jonathan Summers. Auntie is Elizabeth Bainbridge. The nieces are the nieces, and everybody else is very, very good. The orchestra under Colin Davis is terrific. It's a really vivid, exciting performance. You ought to know that Vickers fiddles with the text a little bit, um, just a few a bit, to, to make Peter a little bit less sort of philosophical and poetic. You know, Peter Pears was the thinking man's Peter Grimes. He was a, a poet in fisherman's guise. Vickers is a serial killer in Fisherman's Guys, so he changes the text a little bit. It's, it really reflects the actual Covent Garden production, and the sonics are marvelous, and it's just it's just delicious. Now, a little a word about the opera, I think, it is, it is in place, would not be out of place. I first encountered Peter Grimes when I was in high school because it was done at Yale. I'm in a production that was directed by Phyllis Curtin, the great American soprano, and uh, I had an opportunity not only to see it, but to get it straight from Phyllis Curtin, who used to come and do uh, sort of master classes in my high school in New Haven. And, uh, you know, I was in the same class. So I was a year early, earlier than her daughter, Claudia, um, who also had a very, very attractive soprano voice. So we were all over Peter Grimes. We hadn't heard of it. I hadn't heard of it. And I just remember vividly hearing the entire story being told to us in the student lounge by Phyllis Curtin's daughter. And then we, we saw the production and we listened to it, we ran out, we bought the record, or at least I bought the record. I mean, because I couldn't wait to hear the damn thing. And at that point, the only recording of it was, of course, the Benjamin Britten Decca recording, which is just splendid. And then there were the 4C interludes. I mean, what a wonderful discovery it was, particularly given the fact that it was really a contemporary piece. It was composed in the 1940s. And, you know, all I knew from opera in those days was like Aida. And I loved Aida. I mean, I loved the whole thing. But this was a whole new experience, especially because it was in English. And it's not a bad libretto. I mean, it's a pretty good libretto, actually. It, 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 it You know, it has to go into like sort of poetic, you know, nooks and crannies here and there. But on the whole... Um, it's an intelligible libretto. It's a good story. Um, it has wonderful, wonderful characters in the borough. You know, you've got the two hookers, and you've got Auntie, the tavern keeper, and you've got the evangelist. I mean, they're all types. They're all characters, and they make for a wonderful ensemble. And Britain, of course, is a genius at melding together both solo numbers, arias, Peter's mad scene, and all of that stuff, with, with choral writing in the grand English tradition. There's a fantastic series of choruses for the populace of the borough. It's really just an amazing piece, a great piece. And it was the first great English opera um, of, well, from England, that is, um, in the 20th century. The first great English opera, of course, was Porgy and Bess, you fools. I mean, you know, which was written in the 20s. But no, no, it's really, it's really an extraordinary work. And this is a very, very fine performance. So if you are looking for a good Peter Grimes, aside from Britain's own, one that is very different, this is certainly worth hearing if it's still around, if you can still find it, God only knows. Um, there have been some very fine ones since also. I mean, Hickox did a really good one. There, there's, there, there are a couple of Monchandos, actually, two of them. But uh, this is still a, a very strong contender in the Peter Grimes sweepstakes. So fear not if you wish to give it a listen and the price is right and, and you come across it. 
I, this was the original, the original cover. I remember the original shiny. It was on Phillips, not Decca. It was wonderful when I was when I was really just beginning to collect all this stuff. Warm memories of a wonderful performance. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.